I think the hockey card market might be a little bit of a sleeping giant. And if you are interested in investing in hockey cards, then today's episode is for you. It's Modern Hockey Card Investing and Collecting 101. Hello, sports card investors, and welcome to the final episode for now in our Sports Card Investor University series. And today, it is Modern Hockey Card Investing and Collecting 101. For the last few months, every Thursday on the Sports Card Investor channel here, we have been putting out different educational episodes telling you about how to invest in all of the major sports, how to find good deals on eBay, as well as a lot of other great educational content. Today is our last day in this series because next Thursday we're going to try a new type of show that we're really excited about. But our Sports Card Investor University series is going out with a bang because today's episode, Modern Hockey Card Investing and Collecting, is an important one because I personally believe that hockey cards have a lot of investment potential right now. And you're going to learn some of the reasons why as we go through today's show. And before we get started, a couple of things you should do real quick. The first is, if you haven't yet, hit that subscribe button and hit that little bell icon so you can be notified of new shows like this we put out. If you already have, give us a little like, hit that like button, that helps as well. And download the Sports Card Investor app if you already have it on your phone, open it up because we have thousands and thousands of hockey cards in the Sports Card Investor app. Every card we're gonna reference on the show today, you can find in the Sports Card Investor app in a variety of different grades to see recent sales and to see what they are currently selling for to go shopping through the app and see good deals on these cards. It is gonna be your best friend as a sports card collector or investor, and it's free. It's a sports card investor app. Just go into the app store on your phone and search for sports card investor. All right, guys, let's talk hockey cards. Now, overall, hockey lags behind other major sports in terms of popularity in the hobby, but it has a very strong and consistent collector base. I had the honor a few months ago of going up to Toronto and going to the Sport Card Expo, which is the largest card show in Canada. And the, the strength of the hockey collector base was on full display at that show. Many people who I met at that show had been collecting hockey cards for years and years and years. It has really a strong, strong, passionate collector base. Of course, hockey is the number one sport in Canada, and it's popular in parts of America as well. Maybe not as popular as some of the other major sports, but there are definitely pockets where hockey has a lot of fans, particularly in the North. And that makes hockey card collecting and investing have kind of a unique geographic nature to it, where you see a lot more emphasis placed on hockey cards when you go to card shows or card shops in the northern part of the US and especially throughout Canada. As a result of that, players who play for teams in the northern US states as well as for Canadian cities typically have more following, more people chasing their cards. Now what's interesting in hockey is you can draw some parallels in, in some ways to baseball. One of those ways is that goaltenders in hockey tend to be viewed relatively similarly to pitchers in baseball. And what that means is that there can be volatility. One bad season can really tank a goaltender's value in hockey just like a pitcher in baseball can suddenly become irrelevant from a collecting or investing standpoint after a season. And sometimes you've got great goalies who are on bad teams, but those great goalies never get the love from the hobby that they should because they're stuck on a bad team. Just like how a pitcher in baseball on a bad team is not going to nearly get as much love on it as a team who as a player who's on an actual contender. Now, from a population count perspective, Hockey has some of the lowest population counts of the major sports. This is one of the reasons why I think hockey cards could go up in value considerably because the pop counts are, are low. So what that means is that the graded population of cards, the numbers pale in comparison to that of the other major sports. 
You know, a high pop count in hockey might be considered a thousand or two thousand of a particular card graded in, let's say, a gem mint condition, a PSA 10 condition. But in basketball and baseball, you often find cards that are 10 times that, or sometimes even, sometimes even more. For example, Connor McDavid's Young Guns hockey card, his rookie card, the Young Guns card, one of his absolute premier rookie cards that people chase in PSA 10 condition, the pop count on that card is a little over 2,000. Compare that to, let's say, Zion Williamson's Prism base rookie card in PSA 10 condition. The pop count on that card is over 20,000. So you can see the difference of magnitude in the pop counts in hockey versus the pop counts in the other sports. And speaking of those upper deck young gun rookie cards, those are one of your big chase cards in hockey. They have been ever since Upper Deck debuted them in 1990, which was when Upper Deck began making hockey cards. Prior to 1990, you saw Opeachy and Topps as the major card manufacturers where you were chasing for rookies. Uh, young Guns and also autograph and memorabilia cards such as SP Future Watch autos or RPAs from the Cup are what tend to really drive the hockey market. Those are the chase cards that a lot of people go after. And of course, of course in addition to vintage cards as well, we're gonna talk about all that in more detail in just a couple of minutes. Now, Upper Deck recently extended their exclusive rights with the NHL. So Upper Deck is the only card manufacturer that is able to produce officially licensed hockey cards, meaning hockey cards that have the team logos on those hockey cards. Now, Upper Deck has a whole lot of different brands underneath the Upper Deck name that they come out with each year, a whole bunch of different sets. But as a manufacturer, they're the only ones with that official license. And because it recently extended with the NHL, there's some who think that Fanatics may eventually try to buy Upper Deck so that Fanatics can get into the hockey card world just as they recently bought Tops to get into baseball cards and they recently won the license as well to produce football cards and basketball cards exclusively a few years down the road from now. But outside of that question as to whether Fanatics could acquire Upper Deck or not, the fact is that actually hockey has had the most stability in terms of its card brands. Because if you think back to 1990 when Upper Deck started making cards, they've been there all the way throughout. And that's much different than what we have seen in the other sports where licenses have changed around between companies over the course of the last 30 years. From an investor or a collector, well, particularly from an investor, for a collector it doesn't matter as much, but for an investment standpoint, you're wanting to invest in those officially licensed cards, the ones that have those team logos on them. Those are the ones that typically are gonna hold the most value in the long run, and that's why it's important to understand who has the official license, which right now is Upper Deck. Now, there has been more emphasis placed on hockey in the US recently. Of course, ESPN did a big deal with the National Hockey League. ESPN is now televising hockey games, and so a lot of hockey card investors and collectors hope that this will help increase the popularity of the sport in the United States, and therefore increase the popularity of the cards in the year to come. Now that you know a little bit more about the landscape of hockey cards, let's talk more about the manufacturers. Now, as I've mentioned a few times already, Upper Deck is the manufacturer right now. They produce a whole bunch of different sets, a whole bunch of different cards. They're the ones that create those young gun cards that are the signature rookies that a lot of collectors search for. They also produce the SP Future Watch Auto Cards and the Cup RPAs. The Cup, by the way, is a very high-end product in hockey that is similar to your national treasures and your flawless that you might find in uh, football or basketball or more of kind of your tops transcendent that you might find in baseball. It's just a really nice high-end product. But there are other manufacturers that make cards as well. Leaf, for example, has been making hockey cards. These are unlicensed hockey cards. But from a collector's standpoint, a lot of the Leaf cards can be a lot of fun. Leaf places a priority on autographs and memorabilia. And they also place a priority on retired players and Hall of Famers. Typically, their cards come in smaller boxes, fewer cards in a box, but a chance for more hits, more autos, more memorabilia cards, etc. 
Now, if you go back in hockey's history, Tops and Opeechee were two of the big names all the way up through the early 2000s. Tops was the American distributor of hockey cards for a long period of time, and then Opeechee was, was the Canadian counterpart. So their cards, many years, were identical in design, but the Opeechee cards were the ones that got distributed in Canada. The Tops cards got distributed in the United States. And because the Opeechee cards were the ones that got distributed in Canada, they normally hold more value than the Topps equivalent cards do. Now, because Topps and Opeechee produced cards for so many years, a lot of the great like 1970s, 1980s stars like Gretzky and Lemieux, uh, etc., those guys can be found in those sets. Now, Opeechee actually has had a comeback um, Opeechee is now being produced by Upper Deck, so the brand name is back, but it's now one of Upper Deck's many sets that they create every single year. Panini, believe it or not, actually briefly made hockey cards for some time in the uh, 2010s. There was a 2013 Prism hockey set that is actually still pretty popular today amongst collectors. And if you go back in time, you'll also find other popular brand names such as Donruss and Fleer and Pacific, Skybox, Score, and Pinnacle that actually all made hockey cards back in the 90s and in some cases the early 2000s as well. But let's look at what some of the key modern hockey sets are right now. So when we're talking modern hockey cards, the sets that you have to start with are Upper Deck Series 1 and 2. This is your basic upper deck release every single year, and it's a very important release because in upper deck series one and two, this is where you find those young guns cards of the rookies that so many people go after. There's also a variation of the young guns cards called young guns canvas. They're less sought after, but they're, they're highly valued because they're more rare. And then there's also clear cut acetate short print cards, which are a big hit if you get a clear cut uh, from series one or from series two. I mentioned the cup earlier. It's the high-end product, the equivalent of National Treasures or Flawless, and the cup is where you're going to find the RPAs, the rookie patch autograph cards that are the biggest chases for any rookie player. And then finally, SP Authentic. This is where you're going to find the Future Watch autograph cards. These cards are numbered to 999. They are a little more expensive and a little more sought after than Young Guns typically because they're much harder to come by. And of course, they have the autograph on the card as well. And many people consider these Future Watch autographs to be one of the absolutely key rookie cards of any uh, young hockey star. There's other popular products that Upper Deck makes as well. There's Upper Deck Ice. This is an acetate product, um, and a lot of people like the Ice Premiers. Those are sought after rookies. You can get their Ice Premier cards. That's one that people like to go after in Upper Deck Ice. Um, other brands such as Skybox Metal, Artifacts, Trilogy, and Black Diamond, people pay attention to those as well. Artifacts and Trilogy have an emphasis on autograph cards and memorabilia cards. Those are the big hits in those boxes. Metal, Skybox Metal, returned recently. It has big hits, including Jambalaya, and that's also where you can find precious metal gem cards, which have become big time hits within the hockey card world again. And then you also have Black Diamond, which has short print and auto memorabilia cards. It's considered a high-end high -end product as well. Other sets that collectors like to go after each year include Upper Deck Premier, Upper Deck Ultimate, Upper Deck Chronology, and Upper Deck Ingrained. All of these sets have a large overall emphasis on short print patch autos. So now you know a bit about the sets, let's talk about some of the key modern players you might want to invest in. So when we're talking about younger players who people are chasing after today from a card investment standpoint, we've got to start with Connor McDavid. Uh, Connor McDavid is, of course, the star player for the Edmonton Oilers, perhaps the most popular active player today. People absolutely love to chase Connor McDavid cards. His rookie cards are from 2015. So in particular, his 2015 Young Guns and his 2015 Future Watch Auto are cards that a lot of people are going after. 
Austin Matthews is another popular player from an investment standpoint, another popular young player. His rookie cards were in 2016. So his 2016 Young Guns and 2016 Future Watch Auto are big cards as well. And of course, he plays for Toronto. He's the center for the Toronto Maple Leafs, which makes him a big hit when those sport card expo shows in Toronto come about every year. Uh, Kale McCarr is the elite defenseman for Colorado. He's from the 2019 set. So his 2019 Young Guns is a popular card that a lot of people chase after. And how about Andre Vasilevsky, the star goalie for the Tampa Bay Lightning? You can find his Young Guns card back in 2014. And of course, we got to talk about the veterans as well. And we're going to start with one of the greatest hockey players of all time, Alexander Ovechkin. He is chasing Wayne Gretzky's all-time goal record right now. He is, of course, the star for the Washington Capitals. And many hockey card investors and collectors love to chase Ovechkin's cards. His rookie cards are from 2005. So his 2005 Young Guns rookie card and his 2005 SP Authentic Future Watch Auto cards are some of the most sought after cards in the sport right now. And then there's Sidney Crosby, the all-time great. He also is from the 2005 rookie class. So you can find his Young Guns, etc from 2005 as well. He is considered one of the best players this century alongside Ovechkin. But of course, it's not just the players playing today who you should consider investing in. You should also consider the all-time greats, retired players, Hall of Famers who have already gone on and had a fabled career. Many people consider them safer investments because their careers are already over and they have a track record of being awesome and likely a track record of their cards appreciating in the hockey card hobby. And when we're talking about those all-time great players, we of course have to start the conversation with Wayne Gretzky, considered to be the Michael Jordan of hockey. And his cards, in fact, they're even more valuable in gem mint condition than Michael Jordan's own rookie cards are. Wayne Gretzky's 1979 OPC PSA 10 rookie card sold for $3.75 million last year. Now, granted, there is only two of those cards in existence in PSA 10 condition. Perfect PSA 10 gem mint condition, only two exist. And that's why you saw a sale of close to $4 million for one of those two cards. And his 1979 Topps rookie cards are also sought after as well. They are not as valuable as the Opeechee rookie cards, but they're still very valuable. So a lot of people love uh, his Topps rookie cards in addition to his Opeechee rookie cards from 1979. Mario Lemieux, his 1985 Opeechee rookie is one that a lot of people uh, seek after. Of course, he is the former star of the Pittsburgh Penguins, considered to be one of hockey's goats. Patrick Waugh, the 1986 rookie, Opeechee is where you can find his sought after 1986 rookie card, the former star goalie for the Canadians and the Avalanche, considered one of the greatest goalies of all time. So a lot of people love going after his cards. And other recent legends, players like Yaramir Yager and Martin Brodeur, they are also sought after by hockey card investors and collectors. If you want to turn back the clock even further and go to true old vintage cards, you might look for the 1951 Parkhurst Maurice Richard card or the 1958 Topps Bobby Hall card, the 1951 Parkhurst Gordie Howe card, or the 1966 Topps Bobby Orr card as some of the all-time great hockey cards. Now, just like when investing in any other sport, if you're going to be investing in hockey cards, at Sports Card Investor, we always recommend buying graded cards whenever possible. Graded cards give you some advantages. You know what the condition of that card is, which is especially helpful if you're buying the card online. The card has been authenticated that it is real, which is especially important if you're buying high-end cards. There are a lot of fake Wayne Gretzky rookie cards out there. Be careful. A lot of those 1979 Topps and Opeechee Wayne Gretzky rookie cards are fakes. It's another reason why you want to buy graded, especially if you're going to be buying a high-end card such as that. And of course, having a graded card 
gives you a better understanding of the price history because you can use a tool like Market Movers to go look at the price trends to understand what that card has sold for over time in the same condition. Now, as I mentioned earlier in the show, hockey cards have a lot lower graded populations than do the other sports. And it's not really getting any bigger significantly at the moment. In fact, in 2021, only 2% of the cards graded by PSA were hockey. Only 2%. Hockey lagged behind all of the other major sports, including soccer, and it lagged behind Pokemon in terms of grading volume. But this isn't necessarily a bad thing. I like the fact that there are low population counts in hockey because if, there's, if, you're, if you're encountering any type of investing where there's a lower population, then if demand starts to increase and the supply is lower, there's the chance for prices to escalate more quickly than other sports where there is a really, really large supply of graded cards. Now, much like the other sports, PSA is often king when it comes to graded card prices. SGC has become a much more popular grading option recently uh, for modern hockey cards. And BGS is what a lot of people prefer for the thicker card. So if you're getting an RPA card from the cup, or something of that nature, a lot of people will grade those with BGS. By the way, if you're interested in getting any of your own cards graded, check out our card grading service at Sports Card Investor where we can help you with all of your card grading needs and give you a discount over the prices you would get by grading directly. You can find out more about that by going to sportscardinvestor.com and clicking on grading in the main menu bar. All right, guys, we covered a lot of ground there about hockey card investing and collecting. Hopefully, this was a good intro episode for you. And remember to download the Sports Card Investor app so you can continue your education on hockey cards by literally looking at thousands and thousands of cards in our database, what they've sold for recently, what they are currently for sale of across tons of different hockey players. That's the Sports Card Investor app. Just go into the app store on your phone and search for Sports Card Investor. Guys, that is it for today's episode and that is it for our Sports Card Investor University series for now. If you enjoy the episode and you haven't already, hit that subscribe and give it a thumbs up and we'll see you back soon with our next one. Take care, everybody.